What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and today we're going to be talking about item rarity. So in this episode, we're really just going to set up rarity and show some ways we could display things differently based on that. And then in the next few episodes, we'll be covering loot and uh, loot drops, percentages, that sort of thing. So we'll use the rarity to, you know, determine how common this loot can drop, that sort of thing. So we are going to go through, and I'm just going to pick up a bunch of stuff you guys know throughout the series that I have a bunch of things that we've added and just kind of placed in the world. So I'm gonna add them all to my inventory. Potions, weapons, equipment, armor, all that stuff. And we're gonna look at our inventory. Now it's pretty darn ugly at the moment, but uh, this is our inventory with different rarities for things. So we have, actually let me close this and pick up the ax as well. You can see I have different colors of text for these items and that's actually because i've assigned them to different rarities now i've made the colors kind of arbitrary uh you probably don't want them these colors because they're a little ugly but really i'm not going to be keeping this entire method that we have here forever i plan on overhauling the inventory system you know our logic can be the same and we can change the widget to make it look nicer at any point so in that case uh, i didn't worry too much about how it looked but you can see that these are different they, they're considered different rarities so the black is considered like common the green will be uncommon blue is rare and then the gold is like legendary so we're just going to cover setting that up today and how we can do some things to make it look a little bit different in our game and some other ideas that you could implement if you don't like just the color-coded system So we're going to go to our code, but before we get started, if you have not watched any episode of the series or you're not caught up, I'll leave a link right here in the top right corner to the playlist. This will cover all of the third-person tutorial and the action RPG tutorial series that have grouped together to become one, so you can get caught up to everything we've done to this point. Otherwise, I'll leave this episode right here, which is the first episode where we started adding weapons and such, just so that you can kind of get familiar with equipping things and picking them up if you don't care about the other mechanics of the game. It still might be important that you have this here so that you know how we do what we do. And with that, we'll get started. So today, really all we're going to do is make some changes in our default item class. Our default item is the one that uh, we really care about because I'm thinking of it as any item weapon or equipment can have rarity now you can of course change that if you don't like that but I have our default item which includes things like potions and then it also has things like weapons equipment armor all that stuff and then I have default weapon and default equipment which are children of that class default weapon is a child of default item default equipment is a child of default item and because of that if we add this enum to the default item class then both weapons and equipment will also get it so everything that i expect to have rarity will have it off this one enum alone so below our e item type where i have item weapon equipment or other i've added a new one and i've called it e rarity for enum rarity and I've just set up some default ones here. You can call them whatever you want. The names don't matter. The amount doesn't matter. I put five. I put none. So if you want something to be like a story item and not have a rarity, you could have none. Just a default case. Then I put common, uncommon, rare, and legendary. Once you put these in, we need a way to store this in this, this actual object reference in this item class. Because right now, having that enum doesn't allow us to actually save it out. It's just creating basically a variable type that we can set and use. So we need to go down below. And we had this e item type before. Type of the item. Well, we need to make the rarity of the item. Same stuff as always. Uh, we will be using a blueprint today. So I've just gone ahead and made it edit anywhere. Blueprint read write. Category item. And then I've made E rarity item rarity. And once you do that, now in the constructor, I just made sure to set a default value for it to set item rarity to none. This will usually happen by default just because C and Unreal handle enums that way, but it's always good to do. Now at this point, you can actually launch your game. That's all we need as far as the code goes. 
And before we start actually setting up the widget to look different and a few other things that we're going to cover, we do want to make sure that we assign our types either on the weapons themselves or in the data tables for the rarities of them. Now, should be noted that if you are having like randomly generated weapons, so for example, say you're Borderlands and not, uh, so the, the two examples I would use, I guess, are Dark Souls would be not randomly generated weapons. And what I mean by that is you have weapons that you can get at certain spots and they do, you know, there's certain damage, certain whatever. It's basically a guaranteed thing. You get this here, this is what it does. If you're playing Borderlands, you could get the same weapon that could be, you know, different rarity. It could be different, uh, all, all different stats different abilities different effects so depending on what you want to do you might change these things in different places what i mean by that is okay so say in my in my case all my items are unique items like this sword is never going to change from the sword currently we could always update it but because of this then i'm giving it a specific uh, rarity and drop rate here so if we go into where our weapons are I'm going to go to uh, blueprints, and for me, it's in objects, and we can go to items and weapons. Now, I'm never going to touch the base item, base weapon, or base equipment, because the default, if you look in your class defaults, uh, it's going to say none by default, which is what we want. We're, we don't really want to ever spawn a base item, base weapon, or base equipment BP. Those are all wrapper classes, but we're going to spawn these individual ones. Now, I did not actually end up making health potions and mana potions commons but you don't have to do that you could leave them as none as well since they are consumables completely up to you so you can set them in, in these blueprints if you'd like i went through and i did actually set it for all of these guys you can see that i did however uh, we ended up updating our system to use data tables instead so we don't have to actually set them in these files. I still went ahead and set them because you could use this way if you're not using the data tables, A. And B, uh, you may want to set it so that when you're in that blueprint, you know what it is, just for convenience sake. So if we go to uh, our data tables now, I'll show you what that looks like. So this is F item. I've now added a rarity uh, parameter to my F item structure that we made in blueprint. And this way I can actually just add the rarity so that uh, when we don't have an object reference and it's just basically an, an object that we're going to spawn in the future or that we have added to our inventory but we don't have a reference to, we can spawn it and display all the details for it. So an F item, F weapon, and F equipment, you're going to add a new variable right here. You're going to call it rarity and then set your type to E rarity. You don't have to call it that, but I think it makes the most sense. And you're going to do it for all three of those structures. When you update all three of those structures, you don't have to give it a default value. The none that it is right now is fine. And then all your data tables may throw you a small error or just say, you know, there's nothing here. What you want to do is now you go to your data tables, go to each item, and assign your rarity, if you have one. Otherwise, it can remain none. But uh, we can do common, uncommon, rare, legendary, all that stuff. And like I said, if you don't have the, the Borderlands example I use where you know things could be different, you could actually have a weapon that spawns that has a different rarity and you're not too sure because um, you're going to generate the stats on the spot, then you don't have to assign a rarity here. It doesn't have to be in your data table. That's something that's going to be created on the spot, and thus there's no real reason to try and store it anywhere beforehand. I went ahead and just assigned everything regardless, because right now I don't have anything like that, so everything does need a rarity right off the bat. And there you go. You can see all my rarities that I set up on the data table. Now, these are the ones that we're actually reading in the game. Those are the ones that are actually being used, not the ones in the class defaults. But that's only if you updated your system to have the data tables, which is not required. Just something that I uh, wanted to use and was showing off. So you may not be that way. All right. And now with that, what we need to do is make sure that our 
either our widgets or just our data in general from the inventory can be read properly regarding the rarity. So to make that work, it's pretty much all going to be done in the single inventory item. So the single inventory item is, regardless of what you have here in the design, it's basically um, an element that the player will interact with, such as a button, like in my case, that stores the data of the item that we are on. So uh, we had this whole big thing where we determine, you know, what type of item it is and then what to do with it after the fact. And that stuff's not changing. That's all good. So you don't have to change anything with that. So we don't need our event graph today, but we do need some of the functions that we already set up. So we have retrieve item from ID, set item details, and a new function that I made called set rarity info. So let's go to retrieve item from ID. Doesn't matter the order you do it in really. But in this function, what we do is we go into our data table, uh, break the structure that it is made of, and spawn a new actor of that class type and set the variables. Now we do this because when we have an item in our inventory, we don't want to have a reference to it the whole time. Say you have 300 things in your inventory, that's 300 actors we have to keep track of all the data of at all times. So that would be a little silly if we wanted to keep track of all that data at once because it's just really not necessary when we can put it in the data table and then spawn an object later. So that's what we were doing. Well, if you've been following the series, you already have all this stuff, don't worry. The only thing we're adding today is now this F item structure updated and it has a rarity enum value. So now I drag off of default item and set item rarity off of it, just like this. Right there. And then I just drag in the rarity from the structure. So I'm just adding another variable here to the list that we already had. It's the same with the weapon. Like in this case, I have rarity at the bottom. Rarity goes into item rarity. I have equipment at the bottom here. And then we have rarity here. And it goes into item rarity. So you can see I've just added a set item rarity to each of these three cases. That way the rarity is set when the item is spawned. It won't be useful or won't be necessary for today's episode. But it will be useful in the future. There's some other things and effects we will use uh, use it for, and actually some other functionality things that we can update to make our game smoother based on that sort of uh, data transfer that we have there. Then we want to go into set item details, another function that we had previously. Now we don't have to change anything with any of the logic that we have in here, but we are going to do what we did again in the last function where we pass in the rarity data to set something up on this widget. So remember, this is the individual button. So this is the one that has the text. Now, it doesn't say item name and weight. It actually says the name of the item and then the weight that the item has. Well, we're going to do basically that, except we're going to use the rarity to change the color of this text. All right, so to do that, I've made a new function called set rarity info. I can add a new function here. Call it set rarity info. Once you click on it, you'll be able to add a parameter. You can add one down here, input parameter, and make it of E rarity type. And I just called it rarity again. Now, this is a bit of a hard coded function. It's fine right now, um, but we'll probably want to make the colors not, you know, just random colors that I picked in this function. What we'll actually want to do is probably have a list or array of colors and what rarity they relate to. We don't have that set up now, and we don't really have an application for that because we don't have multiple places where we're using this. However, in our, you know, when our game becomes more complete, we're going to have more uh, reasons to use that and more cases. So we'll update that in the future. But for now, what I've done is I've taken the rarity that comes into set rarity info, and then just called set color and opacity on the text box with a color that I've chosen. So in set item details where we just were, you can now call this function before we even fill out set rarity info. You can just call it now and pass in the rarity from the structure. Once you do that, it'll come in here and then we'll set the text color. So uh, for me, it's called item name text, but you can do whatever you want. You can uh, add, you know, like one star. This is a one star weapon. This is a five star weapon. You could change the uh, color of the actual box. You could, you know, display it in one 
one or another way just saying oh this is you know this is rare this is legendary you could change the actual icon there's so many ways you could handle this for me we're just changing the text color so i grab my item name text which is a variable get it and i call set color and opacity just like that now if you drag off of this and say make it'll ask you to make a slate color and that's how i've gotten this box here so all i've done is a switch statement on the rarity that comes in and then those three nodes that i just showed you uh just a few seconds ago and change the color on each of these so let's look at the top one so this is if there's no rarity so either this is a story item or for whatever reason it doesn't have a, a rarity i'm leaving the text as just standard white and so you can click on the specified color box here it'll pick your it'll bring up your color picker and then you can change your color you're going to do this for all of your rarities you can see that gold is legendary, blue is rare, green is uncommon, black is common, white is none. And once you've done that, then you should see that when you open your inventory, if your items were assigned and, and have rarities already, then when you go to play the game, and say we look at these two things, they have different color text because their rarities are being read properly. And guys, that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed this episode on Rarity. Like I said, we're going to be using this in the next episode or two when we get into loot drops. We will actually drop different loot based off of a random value. And the value that we get will factor in the rarities of certain items. They'll have specific drop rates. So Legendary will be harder to come by than just a common item from a drop. We will also be going over... I'm still going to call it drops, really, but we'll also be going over, like, looting chests and stuff to get random items. So, defeating enemies and looting objects is basically how we're going to get these loot drops. We'll be covering both of those in the next few episodes. So, that's all I got for you today. But if you enjoyed, please subscribe. It does more for myself and the channel than anything else you can do, and I really appreciate it. Just want to give a huge shout-out to all my Patreon members and YouTube membership subscribers. Thank you guys so much so much for all the love and support helps me more than you know and i just really really appreciate it lastly guys if you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my other tutorials feel free to join the discord community it's completely free and i'll be happy to help you out with any issues that you ran into while uh while making this in your game and like i said that's all i got so thank you so much guys i'm sean the bro and i'll see you in the next one goodbye guys